All right, we want to take a look at finding rational zeros of a polynomial function. We're going to be using the rational zero test. So we have a function, f of x, is equal to negative 10x to the third minus 17x squared plus 7x plus 2. The rational zero test tells us if p over q is a rational zero, then p is a factor of the constant term, and q is a factor of the leading coefficient. Really, we just want to take a look at these pieces first. Now, our constant term, in our case, 2. That's the term that doesn't have any variables. His factors are, well, 1 and 2. But we could have positive or negative values for both of these. After all, negative 2 over 1, for example, would give me a negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 1, that's what would give me that positive 2. So we need to take a look at both the positive and the negative factors. Our leading coefficient, this is a cubic function. So our leading coefficient is that negative 10. But again, that negative 10 has a large set of factors. 1 times 10 is 10. Either 1 could be positive or negative. 2 times 5 is 10. Either one of those could be positive or negative. So we actually have 8 factors to look at when we want to consider our leading coefficient. So what we can start is setting up our possible zeros. I don't know that these guys are zero yet, but just starting with the first factor, from the constant term, we're going to get our p's, the numerator of the rational zero. From our leading coefficient, we're going to get the q. So, looking at 1 over 1, that could give me a positive or negative 1. Then I'm going to look at 1 over 2, positive or negative 1 half. 1 over 5. And I'm just starting with the first factor from the number 2, and then I'm going through all the factors of the number 10. We could have positive or negative 1 over 10. So, so far we've used the number 1 for the numerator and all four of the values from the negative 10 for the denominator. So now let's take a look at using the number 2 as the numerator. 2 over 1 is the number 2, so I could have positive or negative 2. 2 over 2, well, that's number 1, but we have him already. We don't need to list him again. 2 over 5, that could be positive or negative. And finally, we'll have 2 over 10, but 2 over 10 would reduce to 1 fifth, and we already have him on our list. So what we've built here is a set of possible zeros. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10... 12 of them total when we include the positive and the negative values. Now what we want to take a look at is, well, which ones are going to give us a value of zero. Now if we use a table function from the calculator, we could get these very quickly. I'm going to go ahead and use synthetic division and I'm starting with a first factor at a time. So let's start with that first factor of 1. My coefficients, negative 10, negative 17, 7, and 2. So now, just doing our synthetic division, negative 10 comes down. 1 times negative 10 is a negative 10. Adding these values, I get a negative 27. 1 times negative 27, negative 27. Adding these two values, we get a negative 20. 1 times negative 20 is a negative 20. Adding these two values give us a negative 18. Well, what I found out is if we had plugged the number 1 into our function, we would get negative 18 as the function value. It is not a 0. So let's try negative 1. Again, coefficients lining up for our synthetic division. Negative 10 comes down, multiply, add, we get negative 7, 
multiplying gives us 7, adding 14, multiplying again because it's so much fun, adding again, we get negative 12. So if we had plugged in a negative 1 into our function, the result would have been negative 12. This is also not a 0. So we tried negative 1 and positive 1. Those failed. So let's try the number 2, 1 half, our next factor. The 1 was gone. So trying 1 half and going through our synthetic division, lining up my coefficients, negative 10 times a half would give me a negative 5. Those add up to a negative 22. 1 half of negative 22 is negative 11. Adding these values gives us a negative 4. 1 half of negative 4 is a negative 2. Oh my goodness, 2 plus a negative 2 is 0. We have found 1 0, and it happens to be a half. Yay! Now we only have 9 more to go through. For convenience and for completeness, feel free to use a table function in a calculator. We'll go one more. We'll just try negative 1 half to see how this plays out. We've got negative 10, negative 17, 7 and 2. Multiplying our negative 1 half times negative 10, that'll give us a positive 5. Adding, we get negative 12. Multiplying again, we'll get a positive 6. Adding, we get 13. Oh, this one's not nice. We get a fraction, negative 13 over 2. But remember, the number 2 is positive 4 over 2. So adding these values, we would get negative 9 halves. All right, fast forwarding through about 8 more of these synthetic divisions, we saw that when x was 1, we got a function value of negative 18. When x was negative 1, our function value was negative 12. At 1 half, we found 1 of our zeros. At negative 1 half, we got a function value of negative 9 halves. And we can use the same synthetic division process. We will find another zero at negative one-fifth. Continuing through, we get a bunch of function values, very many of them ugly. At negative two, we find our third zero, and you know, I'm not even going to bother using synthetic division or checking two-fifths. And keep in mind, while I use synthetic division, you could have simply plugged each value into the function as well. What we have so far is three zeros. So we have found our zeros. The first one was at one half. The second one at negative one fifth. The third one at negative two. And so we've completed the first requirement, the first thing we were looking for using the rational zero test to find the zeros of a polynomial function. Now that we found zeros for our polynomial, we could take advantage of the fact that we know the zeros, we can find a factor for each of them. Remember, for our factors, we're going to use x minus whatever the zero was for each factor. The other thing I need to keep in mind is the leading coefficient. In this case, our leading coefficient was the number negative 10. So he's proving to be quite useful for us. Our factored form then will have our f of x equal to our leading coefficient, negative 10, times x minus our first 0, x minus a half. x minus our second 0, well, x minus a negative 1 fifth would become x plus 1 fifth. And finally, we had a 0 at negative 2. x minus a negative 2 would yield x plus 2. Now, if you're feeling in a fancy mood, notice negative 10 is negative 1 times 2 times 5. This is nice for cleaning up our factorization, because then I could multiply the number 2 to one of the factors. I could multiply the number 5 to another one of the factors.
Finally, we would have our f of x is negative 1. After all, I couldn't do anything with a negative 1. Distributing the 2, we will have 2x minus 1. Distributing the 5 in our second factor, we will have 5x plus 1. And finally, we had our third factor, x plus 2. This is nice. We have our factors with whole number coefficients. I think we'll stop there. Thank you.